this video, I'm going to show you how to download our out-of-the-box ServiceNow virtual agent and how to deploy that in your Chime instance. So right, right here, I'm starting from our ServiceNow virtual agent web page. And you can see there are two downloads that we're going to need to download and then extract the contents of those zip files. So I've gone ahead and done that here. And then we can copy these files and we're going to bring them over to the Chime server. We're on the Chime server now, and we've copied the ServiceNow virtual agent folder and the credentials encrypter folder over. We take a look in the ServiceNow virtual agent folder. We can see there's a few DLL files and then a ServiceNow credentials file. If we take a peek in here, you can see that we're going to have to fill in where the ServiceNow instance URL is and then username, password, if we want to use basic auth, or username, password, client ID, and client secret, if we want to use OAuth. So in this example, we're going to show you how to use basic auth. So just to make it simpler, we're going to delete those two keys because we don't need them. So first thing we're going to paste in is our instance URL. You can see this is HTTPS, then the um, instance for servicenow.com. And then we also have slash API slash now slash table. And then there's an ending slash also. So for most people, you just need to copy the URL and then it's going to look just like this, where your instance is um, what's highlighted here. Next, we're going to paste in a uh, username and password. But these need to be encrypted, so that's where um, the credentials encryptor folder is going to come into play. I'm just going to save these changes here, and then we're going to open the credentials encryptor folder. And there is a credentials encryptor application that we're going to run. So this is just a console app, and basically we just enter the name um, the values that we want to encrypt. So in this case, that's going to be the username and password for an account in ServiceNow. So the account that we use has a REST service role and an ITIL role, and that allows us to access the REST APIs. So I'm entering the name of the user, and then I'm going to enter the password. And then I hit enter. That closes the application and it creates this encrypted credentials text file that we can then copy and paste the values from and paste them into the um, credentials file. So we're just going to copy and paste. And save our changes again. Next, we're going to check to make sure that the files are not blocked by our operating system. Sometimes when we download files from the internet, the OS will block them, um, but this is a problem because it uh, prevents us from loading the files in Chime. So we're going to right click and go to properties. And you can see at the bottom here, it says that this file is blocked. So we want to unblock it. And we want to do that for each of the files in this folder. So now we're back in the ServiceNow virtual agent folder. We're going to go ahead and copy all of the files in here. And then we're going to navigate to the Chime for Link installation folder. So we're on the Chime server. And by default, that's going to be in the C drive, program files, instant technologies, Chime for Link. And then we're going to find the plugins folder and paste our um, the files in there. That's all we need to do on the Chime server. And so now we're going to switch over to our browser and go ahead and load these virtual agents in Chime. So here I am um, at our Chime application. We're going to go to Admin, Virtual Agents. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the state for the Virtual Agent Manager from off to on. That's going to kick off 
the Chime application to load the virtual agents. So you can see that three virtual agents were found in that file. You can see the name for each of them, the type, and then a description about what they do. The files were all found, and their status is currently disabled. So in order to assign each of these virtual agents to a queue, we're going to switch the status to enabled. Um, for this sample, I'm just going to enable two of them just to uh, make a point. So from there, these two virtual agents can be assigned to a queue. Let's go to queue settings to assign them. So from ma my manager home, we can go to manage queues and then queue settings for the queue that we want to put the virtual agents on. So from the dropdown, we can see the enabled virtual agents that are available. There are no conversational virtual agents because um, none have been enabled. And we're going to select the post conversation virtual agent also. We're going to hit save and that's all that needs to happen. Um, so now we're ready to do a test chat and see how this works. So here we're at the queue dashboard for the support queue. You can see that I'm an agent in the queue and I'm available. And you can also see that my Skype client, I'm available. The queue is online and enabled. And so we're ready to do a test chat. I'm going to start a chat with the queue using the name and last name and email address for a user that exists in our ServiceNow instance. So for us, that is a person called Able Tutor. And I'm using this account again because it exists in ServiceNow. As the expert, I get prompted to accept the chat, so I do so. And then I'm connected with Able. I'm going to close the chat window that gave me the prompt. So as an expert, we see my Skype client here, and there's also the context window extension. And what's neat is that the ServiceNow virtual agent has added a new incident button here. And because I'm using an on-premise link server, I also get an embedded tab where I could also log in to ServiceNow and view that in incident. I can also come back here and click on the new incident button and a browser window will open that brings me directly to the new ticket. You can see that the caller has been assigned to ABLE because the virtual agent found a user with the same email address as the guest. The contact type is chat. This is a new dictionary entry that has been added. So if we go to look at this dictionary option, you can see there is this option chat with the label is chat and the value is chat. And that is what the virtual agent has set that field to be. You can also see that the short description is the guest question. And there also has a work note has been added with the date and time that the guest entered the queue. So as the expert, I can chat with the guest and then when the session is over, uh, we'll see what happens to the ticket in service now. So when the session ends, either by the guest or the expert closing the session, the post conversation virtual agent is going to update that ticket. So we can click this button again and see what happens to the incident. We can see that an activity has been added as a comment that includes all of the metadata within Chime. This is all of the seeker information, including the server name that they um, sought help from, their IP address, any skill tags, and then, of course, all the chat messages that happened between the guest and the expert. So this is what the out-of-the-box virtual agent 
does for integration with ServiceNow.